Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out. Mad Science Expo from AEG. This is for two to six players, taking about 30 minutes to play. And it's for ages 14 plus and in Mad Science Expo. This is a bluffing game in which you're going to try and get points by recruiting minions to your teams because you are a mad scientist and then scoring those teams of minions in order to gain points. But it's not going to be that easy because other people are going to be challenging your teams and trying to recruit your team over to their team so they can score the points instead of you. What am I talking about? Let's open it up and I'll tell you how it works. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Mad Science Expo. So first and foremost, we're going to handy dandy rule booklet. It is seven, eight pages, double sided, full colors, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It's pretty well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. It's also an incredibly simple game so I can teach you to how to play right now. So in Mad Science Expo, you are trying to get the most points by recruiting the green cards, aka the minions, the, uh, the, the assistants, the Igors, to your teams and then score your teams once you have a team of three minions you're going to do that by competing in uh, what is essentially pick your cards war but what am i talking about let's go over the cards let's show you exactly how it works so first everyone is going to get this these cards right here zero through six and you also have your own mad scientist who's got his own unique picture but in actuality they are all the same there's no asymmetrical aspect to this game at all next everyone's going to get this player reference card which is very useful it would also remind you of who your mad scientist is in case you forget which I, I, I guess, whatever. Uh, and then it has a player reference here, which is going to tell you exactly what you can do on your turn. And I can do that as well, because there's only two things you can do on your turn. So the first turn of the game, uh, if you're going first at least, is going to be to place down a henchman. So you can play a henchman down in front of you and put them into your team, which is going to be this area right here in front of me. Now there is various different reasons why you'd want to put big cards or small cards, and depending on when you do it, because there's a lot of bluffing going on in this game. But for now, I'll play it safe and I'll just put this one right down here. No one else knows that I have a one down here. And then we would go to the next player over here. So the next player has the same deck of cards that I do and they have a choice now. They can either uh, play a henchman like I just did or they can choose to try and steal my henchmen and recruit them over to their team area. Uh, and if I had two henchmen here, they could steal both of those henchmen. If I had three henchmen here, then I, that'd be incredibly lucrative. They would try and steal all three of them. How does that work? Well, what they're going to do is they say, I am targeting your team of henchmen right here. And then they're going to choose their cards and they're going to play them face down. So let's show you exactly why they would do that. So they might put these ones right here, which is a three. That's not particularly high. So they might play a three, but they're like, I have three cards that I'm sending at you. No, I don't know what those three cards are. And I'm freaking out a little bit here. I might be like, oh man, I really, I really want to keep this. So you know what? Maybe I'll play these two big cards right here. You know what? Maybe I don't want to lose these two big cards and lose that card too. So maybe I'll go big. I'll go real big. I'll do all three, do three cards too. Then we reveal them. And then I have 12 and they have three. And at this point, I've won. So I should feel good, right? No, in actuality, I'm going to feel bad because the unique aspect of this game is uh, while I reveal these cards to you, you don't actually do that in this game. What you do is you hand the cards to the other person and they hand the cards to you and then you see who had the high score. So at this point, I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? He was bluffing me because the unique aspect of this game is I now keep the cards that he gave to me and he gets my card. So right now he's looking at a really nice hand right here of very high cards, which could potentially swing the game to him. Um, if you ever use your mad scientist, the mad scientist is something you can use. So let's talk about the mad scientist. So the mad scientist can never join your team. He would never be down there with those cronies. Uh, and you can never lose your mad scientist. Now you can use your mad scientist in combat, but it's high risk, high reward. The, the, the reward is obviously you're using a six, which is the biggest card in the game. But the risk is if you lose a, a combat with your scientist. So like, let's just say I put this guy down with a one and a two uh, just now, and then they had the 12, I would be out of the game. I would be done. Now I could still potentially win the game if I had enough points in my team bank, in my team scoring area, which would be right over here. But for right now, uh, I would be out of the game. So let's show you how, how you get points in this game. So let's just say it comes to my next turn. I do this, uh, he does that. And then I say, all right, I'm going to challenge you. 
So at this point, I'm challenging him for his one team card right here. Now, why I want to do that uh, is because it, once you get three people in your team, you can score your team at the beginning of your turn normally. However, if you actively challenge an opponent, steal their cards, and then have three, then you can score your points right now. So I'm trying to do this as a self-preservation move to steal this card and then score these points. So you know what? I'm going to go big. I'm going to go with my eight so i have two cards down here and he's like well it's only two cards you know what? maybe i'll maybe i'll go halfway and i'll just go you know i'll go throw down like a seven i don't really care about this card down here so maybe he throws this so we would once again pass the cards to each other now he sees that i've beaten him and what's even worse is since I use the Mad Scientist, I get back the Mad Scientist, he only gets to keep the two, and then I get his three, I get his four, and I get his card right here, which I wasn't actually supposed to look at, I just cheated. Uh, and then I have the option to score these, which I probably would do right now since I know he has high cards. Eventually, though, what's going to happen is everyone but one player is going to eliminate, get eliminated from the game, or everyone will only have two cards in their hand. Once that happens, the game immediately ends and you tally up the points right here. It doesn't matter if you have points here or points in your hand. That doesn't matter at all. It's all about the points that you have put into your score pile that were part of your team. So for instance, for this game, I would have seven points. Uh, whoever's those points will be the winner of Mad Science Expo. One last thing I want to mention is ties. So in the result of a tie when you're challenging and passing cards, uh, nothing happens. Nobody loses any cards. Nobody gets defeated. Uh, nobody loses any of their team cards, I should say. But you still swap the cards. So even though you might have played, uh, given him two cards and he gave you three cards, you get to keep his three cards. He gets to keep your two cards. You go about your merry way. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do instead of Mad Science Expo. Alrighty then, Mad Science Expo from AEG. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. While it does play at two to six players, I liked it best at the higher player counts. Two players, I just, I didn't like the game at all. Three players was better, but four, five, and six, I think is really the meat and potatoes with this game. Also, uh, one nitpick that I have that really annoys the crap of me is this is the box. This is the stinking box, and the cards take up maybe 12% of the box. This could have been a tough box. This could have been a micro game, like a Rumpelstiltskin type of box. But instead, they choose to put it in this big honking box, and that just annoys the living crap out of me. I hate that. I understand you want the shelf presence, and you want people to think it's a bigger game than it is. But man, when you open this box, you're like, oh yeah, what's going to be in this box? It's like, oh... It's a deck of cards and a rule booklet. No pawns, no pieces, no rondelles, no spinny things, no nothing. Just stupid freaking cards. I, I hate that. I hate when game companies do that. AEG, just put this in your stupid Rumpelstiltskin size box and market it as a Rumpelstiltskin style game because that's what it is. It's a very light, simple game. It's a, uh, it's almost a micro game-esque with its mechanisms, I would say, which will be a turnoff to some people. It's very light. It's very simple. You only have two actions you could potentially take on your turn. Period. That's it. Grand total. You will never do anything on your turn except for challenge people or lay down a team card, uh, which will definitely be a huge con for a lot of people. Any other cons that I have with the game? <sighs> it gets weird and kind of wonky when it's down to two players, and there is player elimination, which doesn't matter so much to the lower player counts, but honestly, once you get to four, five, and six, it gets a little bit annoying because if you overextend yourself just that one time, you could potentially be out of the game quickly, and then you're sitting there for the next 15 to 20 minutes while other people play and while you're bored, and this isn't the most entertaining game to watch either. Any other cons that I have with the game? No, I guess not. Moving on, Mad Science Expos, it, it's okay. It's good. I had fun with it. If this was the only game I had in the entire board game hobby, I would probably like it a lot better than I do. But the bottom line is, I've played a lot of other games, and I know a lot of other games are better than this game. But this game does have some good stuff, so let's talk about the good stuff. So first, I like the bluffing in this game, and there's different layers and levels to the bluffing. If you like bluffing, I think this one might be one you would enjoy as a light filler weight game. That's the main, you know, you want a quote for this, that's the main quote right here. If you like bluffing, this one might be one you want to check out if you're going to play at the higher player counts. Uh, but that's another con, obviously. If you don't like bluffing games, then this one is absolutely not going to be for you because it's all about bluffing. You know, which cards do you put down here? That can potentially be a bluff. If you put the zero and the one down here and you're actually hoping they get stolen and then you're giving them low cards because they're while they're feeding you 
uh, big cards? Are you playing the long con there? And then there's that aspect of when do you use your scientist? Uh, I, I like that aspect an awful lot. I like how the scientist works in this game. It's a very high risk, high reward kind of thing using that scientist. Because if you use it in combat and you lose, you're done. But if you win, you get your scientists back, you get all of their cards, you get their team potentially. I mean, there's a lot to gain from using that scientist, but also a lot to lose. And I like that. I like the fact there's actually consequences for using that powerful card in the game. Uh, and in the end, Mad Science Expo is okay. I think it's good, but I don't think it's great. I don't think it's fantastic. I can't really recommend it to anybody unless you really like lightweight bluffing games. And even then, the box, ah, the box wants me to, ah, I hate this box. It's so stupid. Why? Why do you need this? Why do you need this? <sighs> Mad Science Expo. It's good. I like it. It's fun. But it's not going to be for everybody. It's not one I would recommend actively going out of your way to get. But if you hit larger player counts and you like bluffing games, this might be one you want to check out. But for everybody else, I think this is a pretty easy pass. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know when was the last time you opened a box and were super disappointed with what was inside of it. Uh, last time I did that, you know what? I'm actually going to break the fourth wall. I'm going to go out of camera and I'm going to get that box because it annoyed the living crap out of me. So let's, let's grab this. Let's go on a little journey together. So I got this game a couple days ago. Pelta Games. Great for two. And I open this big old box. You know what's in it? This. This is what's in the box. That's what's inside of this big box. Oh, and some pins. But those are just for promotional stuff. Yeah. That's what's inside the box. Come on! Put it in a smaller box. But let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.